Okay, so the goal of this video is to remind us of the tools that we have uh, available to us when we're dealing with stoichiometry. Now remember, stoichiometry is looking at reactants and products and amounts between them. So let's go ahead and start with what we, what we know here in looking at um, reactants and, and products, right? So if we remember these coefficients here, right, if there's nothing here, we would say it is one. Tell us the mole ratios that we'd have between reactant A, reactant B, B to product C, etc. Okay. Now if we're going to convert or look at how much of reactant A we would have, that's going to tell us how much, how much C we would produce. We want to think out what, what would then be the main way that we would measure those. Okay. Well, if we're dealing with something that is aqueous, what would make sense, right, that is a solution. Would it make sense for us to measure the mass of that solution because it's not all A, right? It's mostly, if it's aqueous, it's mostly water. There's some amount of A. Well, the way we look at the amount of A is that if we're dealing with aqueous solution, we think about molarity is going to be our conversion factor, right? It's moles of A per liters of solution that A is inside of, okay? Well, molarity is our conversion factor. And then if we think, well, what would be the typical measurement we would make for A here? Okay, well, A is aqueous. We're dealing with aqueous. It's a liquid. So then our experimental measured value would be volume. Okay, we measure the volume of a solution. Well, then we know now the relationship between how much of A is in some amount of that solution. And so then we can use that conversion factor to find out the number of moles, right? Moles of A relative to our volume here, okay? So we're dealing with an aqueous compound that gives us the ability to relate what we would measure, volume, to the number of moles, okay? Well, then if we go to something that is a pure liquid, well, now for the pure liquid, we can measure the volume, we can measure the uh, mass, okay? Well, now if we're dealing with how those relate to each other, we think, well, what would be our conversion factor that we would use? Well, if we were to measure our experimental value that we would measure is mass, well, the relationship between mass and moles, right, is our molar mass, grams per mole. So it gets us the ability to relate the amount of something, mass, that we would measure and the number of moles that we would have, okay? Now, if we were to measure the volume of that pure liquid, now again, this is a pure liquid, it's not a solution. So all of that volume is that liquid. Well, then we can go ahead and determine, in order for us to get to the number of moles, we gotta go through our molar mass. Well, then we could also use our density, right? And remember, density relates volume and mass. So typically given to us in grams per milliliter, okay? So now we see that if we have a pure liquid, we have the ability to convert or find out how many moles based upon our measured value, mass or volume, uh, using either our density and our molar mass or just our molar mass if we measure our mass. Now we go on to our product and looking at, maybe we're gonna predict the mass of that product that we would make. Now we would talk about the mass because we're dealing with a solid here. Typically with solids, it's not easy for us to measure volume, right? Because it doesn't fill the container like it, it would a liquid would, okay? So typically then what we're gonna measure is the mass of a solid. Well, if we're going to go from mass of a solid to moles or moles to mass, again, we're going to use the molar mass as our conversion factor, grams per mole. And then that gets us the ability to relate molar mass and uh, our mass here relating to our number of moles. Okay. Now, finally, we have our other product here that we're dealing with, and that other product now is a gas. Okay, well, when we're dealing with a gas, we typically don't try and measure the mass because we can't just pour it into a container and measure the mass. We can't just pour it into a container and it fill the bottom of that container like the volume when we're dealing with a liquid. So what we would do is we say gas fills the container. So in order for us to measure how much of a gas we would have, we would need to know the pressure of that gas. We would need to know the volume of the container that that is in. And we would also need to know the temperature that it's at. We need to know all those pieces for us to find out the number of moles, okay? And then our conversion factor, our relationship that we have to convert between those three measured values of our gas would be 
the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT, right? So if we know our pressure, we know our volume, we know our temperature, R is a uh, relationship factor here, we can go ahead and find out the number of moles of that gas that we would have. So hopefully this gives us a good refresher on the tools that we have available to us when we're dealing with reactions, whether it would be an aqueous reaction, a gaseous reaction, a mixture of solids, liquids, gases, aqueous ions, uh, or aqueous compounds, and we see that we have the ability to use all of these in a single reaction that has a bunch of different types of reactants or products.